It is important to put on the handbrake on the van before unhitching from your vehicle. To make sure the van is level before setup, attach the jockey wheel. Remove the trailer plug from the tow vehicle. Wind the jockey wheel up or down until the van is level. Now unhook both of the chains and the tow secure, if applicable, from your vehicle. To stabilise your van, use the jacks at each corner using the handle. Wind down until all four legs are on the ground. The gas bottles are located at the front of your van. Before using any appliances, first turn on the gas at the bottle. Ensure the tap lever mounted above the regulator is pointing toward the bottle you intend on using. It is imperative that your leads are 15 amps. This will allow you to plug in a 15 amp site. Plug the mains power into the van's power inlet. If you are in a remote area or plan on travelling into such areas, we suggest that you talk to your dealer about a generator that is applicable to your van or a suitable solar system, if applicable. To fill the water tanks and connect to a water supply, unlock the water filler by rotating clockwise from the plastic key provided. The water tank's fillers are located to either side of the hose connection. That, when attached, will provide a constant supply of water to your kitchen sink, vanity and shower. Start by moving the awning lock on the top right of the awning to the open position. Undo the arm locks and loosen the black lock knobs. Pull the awning strap down to release and extend the awning. If you cannot reach the strap, there is a wand located inside the van. Next, extend the side awning arms. Lift with the handle, lock into place and tighten the black knob. Pull the awning strap aside and wrap around the poles to secure. Your awning is now complete and ready for use. Loosen the top locking knob, lift the handle and lower the arm until it rests on the stoppers. Push the catch so the top arm can slide towards the van. Hold the strap firmly and rotate the brake lever from open to close. It is imperative that you keep tension on the strap as you walk to close. If tension is not applied, this will cause the awning to close rapidly and could lead to possible damage. Now close the storage lock and tighten the top arm locking knob. To set up the bed ends, you will first need to unlock the two locking knobs and then raise the lid on the bed end. Lower the bed gently until they are supported by the cables which are located on the inside of the bed end tent. Insert the bed's support bar into the bed end's front frame and carefully push outwards. Place the other end into the locking slot located underneath the cupboards. Release the buckles holding the mattress together and fold the mattress over. Repeat this process on the other bed end if applicable. The only added step is that you have to release the catch for the rear end bed before you lower. If your layout is fitted with a bunk bed, use the slide rail to slide into position and then lock into place. Unfold the mattress and place the ladder in the brackets until it is firmly in place. Your dealer should have explained your isolating switch location to you. Turn on the isolating switch. This will turn on 12 volt to the RV. The drifter control panel monitors water tank levels and the 12 volt battery charge state. It will show you the volts on your battery and the amps in your battery. The switch on the top of your battery switch, this will either turn on your battery power or isolate it. If the battery is off, it will say in the corner of the screen battery off and the water pump off. To turn on the battery, flick battery switch down. The battery switch needs to be on to charge up any power source. The bottom switch is your water pump switch, which will turn on your 12 volt water power. Flick the switch down to bring up your tank water levels. The coast control panel will monitor your water and battery levels. To check levels, flick the monitor switch to the left and hold it there. This will show you if your water tank is full and or quarter full, half full or three quarters full. 
it will also show you your battery levels. To turn your 12 volt pump on, flick the pump switch to the right. Your 12 volt pump will only be on if you are free camping or pulled up on the side of the road. This will bring your tank water up by pressurising it. If mains pressure water is not available, use water in your tanks. Firstly, check the water level in your tank by viewing the monitor on your drifter control panel. To turn the pump on, use the switch with the water drop symbol. You can now turn on the tap. Please note, when using mains water, make sure the pump is turned off. If mains pressure water is not available, use water in your tanks. Firstly, check the water level in your tank by pressing the monitor button on the water level gauge. To operate, press the button marked pump. You can now turn on the tap. Please note, when using mains water, make sure the pump is turned off. Turn the gas bottle on and also turn the water heater switch on. Located at the main switchboard, a light next to the switch will go out once the hot water system ignites. Your dealer will have demonstrated this to you. Simply turn the internal gas switch off. Open the door of the hot water service unit, remove the pin and turn the switch to the on position. Press the red button on the left to scroll through the menu. This will tell you the solar information required for use. Your dealer would have programmed your remote for use. Point the remote towards the unit and press the power on button. The LED light indicates cooling or heating mode. You can adjust the airflow to front and rear with the damper thumb wheel. Please refer to the instruction manual supplied with the product for further use. Your dealer will have programmed your remote for use. You can adjust the airflow to the unit on all sides. Point the remote towards the unit, press the power on button. Please refer to the instruction manual though, supplied with the product for further use. Rotate the handle until it stops. This means that the antenna is at full height. Pull down and spin the exterior disc, which will rotate the antenna until you have reception. The TV can either be used on a 12 volt via the socket in the antenna point or direct to the 240 volt via the power point. Both leads are supplied with the unit. If running the TV on 12 volt, only a drop in the power can cause an intermittent drop in picture. For best results, use 240 volts as your first choice of power. The antenna has a built-in amplifier. Press the button to turn the amplifier on. Press power on the television and the DVD. For detailed use of these, refer to the owner's manual supplied with the product. Remember before travelling, ensure the TV is secured. Make sure the antenna has a clear view of the sky and is not obstructed in any way. Turn on your satellite TV receiver and TV. Press the power button on the unit. When the display powers up, press the search button. The satellite system will now control the antenna. Please allow the satellite to rotate and search for the selected satellite. The display will power off to save power. To close the dish and to turn off your antenna system, press the power button on the display. This will wake up the system from its sleep mode. Now press the close button. This will start to close the dish to the home closed position ready for travel. Once this is completely closed, the display will power off and go back into sleep mode. Turn off your satellite TV receiver and TV. To turn on, press the button labelled with an S for source. Press the source button to scroll through the functions. To insert a disc, press the top left button and the face will drop. Insert the disc and close the face. For more features, please refer to the user manual supplied with the product. Turn the power button on. To scroll through the menu list, hold down the grey button and use the arrows to toggle through the options and the grey button again to select. You have the option of turning the fan switch on. The travel catch is located at the bottom right hand side of the fridge. Please refer to the owner's manual for further use. Please use the buttons to operate the range hood. This includes LED downlight, fan and speed settings. Turn and hold down the knob for the burner you wish to light. Now press the ignite button and hold down until flames appear from the burner. 
The same process applies with the griller and oven if applicable. Please note that the grill door is to remain open when the griller is in use, and the glass lid must be fully up when any burners are in use. When using the griller for the first time, run for 15 minutes and the oven for 30 minutes without food inside. It is important to turn off all burners and allow them to cool down before closing the lid. Remove the cooking plate from the microwave oven before you start travelling. The microwave has a 25 litre oven capacity and five power level setting. The microwave has the following settings. Quick start, auto defrost, speed defrost, multi-stage cooking, auto cook and features a child lock option. If your unit features an electric slide out lounge or bed, simply press the slide out switch down until the slide out is all the way out and shuts off. The roof hatch can be used in two positions. Please follow the grooves to select the position. You can slide the fly screen across the roof hatch for protection while still allowing light through. There is also a block out screen for use. Once the mains or the 12 volt pump are going, just simply rotate the flick mixer to the desired temperature and pressure. You will find the toilet chemicals under the toilet lid. Before you use, move the grey latch located on the toilet base to the left hand side. Your dealer will have explained how to use the cassette to you. Locate your cassette and apply the chemicals as per your dealer's instructions. The Sphere 3 kg washing machine has five processes, from a wash rinse spin cycle lasting approximately 38 minutes to a simple spin cycle lasting approximately 7 minutes. Wash settings are set via the control panel. To wash clothes, select the proper water level according to the quantity of clothes. Select the programs and process. Close the lid and press the start pause button. For more information, refer to your washing machine operation manual. If your unit is fitted with a tow secure system, please refer to the supplied operating instructions. Connect the blue cable to a part of your tow vehicle. The tow secure system is standard equipment when GTM exceeds 2000 kilograms. It's important to make sure that the battery inside the tow secure system is fully charged before traveling. This unit will engage the RV brakes in the unlikely event of your RV coming free from your tow vehicle. Close the awning. Check that the brake lever of the awning is in the closed position as well as the arm storage lock and turning knob is tight. Close the electric slide out. Turn off the gas. Wind the rear jacks up. Put the jockey wheel into the bracket and raise the jockey wheel until it is lifting the front of the van. Wind up the front jacks. Lower the jockey wheel so the hitch on your van can catch onto the tow ball. Release the handbrake. Using a good fiberglass polish and a car cleaner that does not contain ammonium, use warm water and a sponge to remove dirt and grime, and in most cases warm water will be sufficient. A soft cloth needs to be used when cleaning the windows to prevent scratching. Once again, please remember, cleaning products must be ammonia free. Check the VIN plate for correct tyre pressures. Be sure to check before every trip Remember to check your wheel nuts every 100 k's for the first 400 kilometres. Your first service is at 1,000 kilometres and every other service after 10,000 kilometres or every 12 months. For safety reasons, be aware that you need more room for turning and extra space required when approaching and exiting fuel bowsers. Be aware when towing, you do need a greater braking distance while in traffic and when approaching traffic lights. If you require more advice in towing skills, we suggest you liaise with your dealer. Most recognised caravan parks have provision to dispose of waste from your toilet. Just remember, if you are unsure, ask one of your fellow Jayco owners. We are sure that they will only be too happy to help and offer advice.